talk about is going deeper into uh, voice interfaces. So <clears throat> us at ThoughtWorks, we recently got this nice new office. And we wanted to put something cool in it. So we thought, why don't we build something like Alexa to control our office? But if you noticed from the, the bank demo, when he was talking to the mirror, he had to ask Alexa to act on his behalf. So if you remember, Alexa, ask the bank to show me my current account. Hmm, I don't know that. Okay, she, she doesn't like me. <laughs> but you, you always have to ask Alexa to ask some, something else to do something for you. And in our office, we, we kind of wanted to talk to the office directly. We're here, can we just talk to our office? And so that meant we had to fire Alexa and, and uh, try and figure out how to do a lot of the stuff that Alexa does for us on our own. Um, we've got some, some way around here with my mouse pointer gone. There we go. And I can give a brief demo of what we have working so far. It's not complete yet, but it can do a few, a few things. So I'll just run it on my laptop. I'll have to hold the microphone up to it so that you can hear it. Um, let's give this a try. Hey office, what's the Wi-Fi password? Which Wi-Fi network? TW Guest. The TW Guest password is Begin Hark Sauce Editor Sign. So if you didn't know the password yet, there you go. Um, and also because we're building it for ourselves, we've had a little bit of fun with it as well. So, hey office, buy some craft beer. Sorry, can you please repeat that? Buy some craft beer. Sorry, can you please repeat that? Buy some craft beer. What type of beer would you like? Yender Pale Ale. Okay, so that's one case of Yender Pale Ale. Should I place the order now? Yes, please. place the order. There we go. So so we can get similar kind of interactions as with the as with the echo. Uh, I'm I'm now gonna move on and explain you know, roughly how we how we built this thing and so start off with how how does a voice assistant actually work? So I have this nice graph for you all to look at. <clears throat> First of all, you, you ask it to do something. So in this case, I've got oi, so we need to detect that someone, it needs to detect that someone wants to talk to it. So in the case of Alexa, it listens for the word Alexa. In the case of hey office, it's listening for hey office. And once the hot word has been detected, then it needs to understand what you've said. What, what have you said after the hot word? So that's where speech recognition comes in. And then once it's recognized what you said, it has to figure out what you actually want it to do. This is where intent analysis comes in. So it's where it's looking at what you've said and thinking, ah, this person actually wants to do X. And then once it's figured out what you want to do, it needs to do it, which is the uh, action processing. And then it needs to let you know the result and speech synthesis, and then finally actually says it. So I'll just go through briefly what technologies we use at each step of this for Hey Office. So beginning with uh, hot word detection. So again, this one needs to detect that specific phrase has been spoken. Ideally, we want this to work offline because we don't want to stream 
every sound that ever gets made in our office over the internet. And I'm sure you feel the same about your own home. And so there's a, there's a couple of the tools that, that um, exist. There's one by a company called Sensory called Truly Hands Free. Uh, this one is a, is a closed source commercial product. So if you want to use that one, you will have to pay for it. And the other one that we're actually using for Hey Office is Snowboy, snowboy.kit.ai. Um, it's semi-closed source, so there are some parts of the Snowboy source code that they keep private to themselves. The rest is available on GitHub. And as long as you're using it for non-commercial use, they're more than happy for you to just use it for free. And then following on from the hot word detection, we need, you need some kind of speech recognition. Uh, again, you can either you can go offline or online here. Um, the offline one is a tool called Sphinx. We'll do speech recognition offline. Um, however, we found that the online, the online speech recognizers are vastly superior. And here are, here are four of the most popular ones currently out there. IBM Watson, Google Cloud Speech, Microsoft Bing Speech, and Amazon do have a speech recognizer, but you can only use it if you're also using Lex at the same time. You can't use it by itself as an independent product. Um, since we're, uh, strange enough, actually using Lex, that was f cool for us. Um, so this is where we come on to intent analysis. Uh, three of the intent analyzers have actually made it onto the radar, all of which are in a cess. So it's something you should be thinking about, but not necessarily going full steam ahead and trying in a product quite yet. Um, this is our own, in, own internal project for fun, so that's a good place to start to try and assess these tools. Um, so the, the ones worth mentioning are so API.ai is gaining quite, quite a bit of traction. Uh, fairly recently got bought by Google. Um, Nuance Mix, which is uh, the second one on the radar, that one is made by the people, if you remember, uh, like the Dragon speech recognizer from way back when. That's the same company popping up again, making a intent analyzers now. Uh, Wit.ai, which is probably one of the first ones to uh, appear on the net. Um, has, has now been bought by Facebook. Uh, Microsoft Lewis is one that I have used on a previous project somewhere between the Mirror and Hey Office, and I found it to be quite quite good, but you kind of get tied to the Microsoft, uh, the Microsoft tech stack if you use that one. Um, IBM Watson Conversation I've seen pop up, although I've, I've not actually used it myself, and then Amazon Lex at the end there. So in this current edition of the radar, when they talk about the conversational UI theme, they give it an honorable mention, but it's not made it onto the radar as a blip. The main reason for that is when they were compiling the radar, uh, Lex was still in private preview. It is now no longer in private preview, so if you would like to use it you don't have to wait for three weeks like we did to get an invite to the preview. You can just, just use it. And so <clears throat> we then move on from the, uh, uh, from the speech recu uh, from the intent analysis, you then need to actually process the actions. So for, for this, you'll we'll need some kind of conversationally aware API. Uh, this is true both for both for um, the, the Hey Office where we're doing everything ourselves and if you're going through something like um, Alexa or Google Home. So you'll need to have some APIs which understand that people are having a conversation with your device. There will be some state that needs to be maintained and moved back and forth. Uh, some of the more complex conversations may actually transition from one intent to another. Um, if you want to learn more about how intents work, then you can come and talk to me or Cole afterwards, and I'll be more than happy to discuss that with you. Um, so APIs for a conversational interface are quite 
different to what you would have for a regular mobile app or a single page application on the web. So, so having some layer in between to make that translation for you is, um, is something that we found to be a useful, useful thing to do. And um, it has been mentioned on our radar before, but under the name of backend for front end, where you should have essentially says you should have a an API layer between your actual core processing and all your different front end styles to make sure that each front end can have a, its own tailored API just for it. And so when it comes to the action processing in Hey Office, um, again because this is an internal project and we want to play around. We've decided to use a serverless architecture, um, going quite heavily into the Amazon um, fanboy space here. Uh, so, so we're using the Amazon infrastructure, API Gateway, Lambdas, Cognito, DynamoDB, and a few others which I can never remember the name of, um, to, to hang all the actions together and get the processing to work. And um, this forms our conversationally aware API, which I mentioned on the previous slide. And then finally, once the once the action has been processed, the, the computer then needs to speak back to me. So Hey Office needs to, a way to communicate back to me. And since I communicate to it through voice, it's nice for it to communicate back to me through voice. Um, there, there are quite a few services and APIs that exist to do speech synthesis. There, if you have a Mac, there is one built into your Mac straight on the command line, and it sounds something like this. Hello, I am speaking. Which sounds pretty shit. <laughs> um, and a lot of the speech synthesizers out there actually don't sound that much better. Um, however, Amazon have kindly released Amazon Poly, which is the same speech synthesizer that they use for Alexa, but they don't give you the Alexa voice. They have a, a series of other voices, um, which is what we're using in, in Hey Office, which is why it actually had a fairly decent voice. And um, I've not yet found anything that's available for use which beats, which beats Poly. However, Google DeepMind um, laboratory have created something called WaveNet. You can find a demo of it on the internet. It sounds really awesome, and they're using some kind of neural net deep learning thing over speech patterns to actually give a very natural sound to the voice, complete with lip smacks and breathing and everything. Um, but it's not available for use yet. Um, Google haven't announced if they're actually going to plan to release it as a product either. Um, in the future, with, with Hey Office, we plan to <coughs> not only have it hear us, but also see us. So there'll be some form of face recognition so that we can have some control over, <coughs> over some of the intent, so we can make sure that it's actually a thought worker asking for this, or if we, get, if we need to know who you are for some, for some reason, then, then ha having it know who you are is good. Um, and something else that, that we can do is object identification. I mean, again, we can have fun with this stuff and have it count how many beers are in our fridge and, and whatnot so that, so that we can then tie that into our beer ordering skill and make sure we don't have too many or too few beers at any one time. Um, to, is, there's various uh, image recognition APIs, image processing APIs available. Um, Amazon recognition is also on the on the radar, so that one would get a special mention. But there's two others here which do a similar thing, um, and we're just we're just starting to look into this, um, and we'll see how it goes, I guess, on the next radar. And then, finally, the last thing I want to mention about our building of Hey Office is that the the demo that I ran on my computer, when we first started writing the code to tie all the Hey Office stuff together. Um, we started writing it in Node.js, and that was going well. We could call all the service, we could get all the sounds. Um, 
However, with Amazon Lex, there is, there is one limitation, and that limitation is that you can't stream the sound to Lex. You have to record all the sound on offline and then send it to Lex in one, in one go. And so the question is, how do you know when the person has stopped speaking? And I was in researching libraries for, for this particular problem. That is where we, we hit a brick wall with Node.js. That Node.js didn't really have any decent libraries for what they call voice activity detection. However, Python has a few. So we immediately stopped with Node.js. We rewrote the whole thing in Python. And well, you just heard the demo. So we have that, we have that now in Python. And so far, we're quite happy with Python. We're going to carry on with it. Um, and Python 3, again, is on the radar. And Python itself um, is also a theme of this radar, pervasive Python, because we're starting to see Python pop up quite a lot, in, especially in the machine learning, natural language processing, and all this kind of cool tech that's coming in at the moment. Python seems to be front row center in all those kind of things. So Python is definitely something worth looking at. And on that point, I shall move over to Tao, who's going to take us even deeper down this rabbit hole.